Luke Bouchard with Solvac Life Coaching Services. I've been a certified life skills coach for 22 years and a bread maker for 30. Welcome. Today is Creative Saturdays and I'm going to be making za'atar bread. Now, I've been, like I said, I've been making uh, bread for close to 30 years and I started when I was in my uh, late teens when I was on a youth program called Katimovic. And what I soon discovered with making bread is that not only did it come fairly easy to me, but I got a lot of joy and satisfaction out of it. So I've been making bread a long time. And for most of those three decades, it's been by hand. But for the last seven, eight years, I've been using a actual mixer. And I've gone through a couple different mixtures and I'm gonna talk about them. I'm gonna talk about the one that I currently use and how I can pop out six loaves of bread like fairly quickly and it's you know about the technology and having the right stuff so i before i get into that i'm going to show you the uh, bread book i use and it's the uh, canadian living uh, bread and pizza book and it is the best bread recipe book i own and i've i have a lot of bread recipes and a lot of different books some are like really thick and and they're actually instruction books from uh, culinary schools. And this is the best. And actually, and actually it's called Canadian Living's Best. And I think it's, I don't think you can get it anymore. It's like picked up at, at a, like a grocery store. And some of the reasons why it's so good is that it gives you a wide variety of recipes uh, from pizza to uh, traditional breads to uh, ethnic breads but it also gives you the, uh, the choice to make them in bread makers or by hand. So, uh, so it's, just, it's just really versatile and I, I, I'm very impressed with it. What else do I wanna say? Oh, uh, today the recipe is, uh, what I'm gonna be making is called za'atar bread or Middle East flat bread. And it is beyond nummy and you actually cook it on the barbecue. So we're gonna to get to that right away. And first I'm gonna show you the uh, spices that go on top of it. So stay tuned. So what we're gonna start with is actually getting the spice ready for the za'atar bread. And I'm gonna uh, show you how I do some lemons and then add the spice to it. So what we do is I have some, as you can see, I've got some uh, lemons that have been cut up and I'm just going to juice a few of them and like that. Like that. And, uh, if you actually would like this recipe, you're gonna have to email me for it, and I'd be happy to send it to you. Okay, so now we're gonna mix the spice for the za'atar bread, and it's a combination of many different things. It's going to be some salt, and that's uh, approximately a tablespoon, and it's going to be a two and a half cups of uh, extra virgin olive oil. So we're gonna add that in there. See that. And now I'm gonna add the lemon. And uh, there is approximately a cup and a quarter of lemon. I told you you're gonna have to call me for the recipe, but here, I give him, here I'm giving it to you. And then the, the main ingredients, and that is the za'atar spice. And here it is here. And so this is the brand I buy. I go to a, um, I don't know, um, a place that, sells this stuff and what's in it is and I think it's uh, Arabic that's written on there um, but what's in it is thyme sesame salt sesame salt fr freck and some other stuff I can't read because it's all uh, it's um, all um, scrunched up and whatnot. But actually it's a Lebanese grocery store that I actually buy this from now that I, I see that it's written on here. So if I've insulted anyone, I apologize. Anyway, here we, uh, so we have the, it all in there. And now I'm going to grab a whip and we're going to mix the bejesus out of it. We're gonna get it nice and uh, Mixed up there and really hydrated. So there we go. And next we're gonna do is start making the bread. So right before I start making the bread, I'm gonna actually show you, uh, and here is my Bosch kit, uh, mixer. 
and it is a universal prep plus 800 watts and I have owned the other mixer that you see on all the other TV uh, cooking shows and whatnot the stand mixers and I went through a couple of those I bought the largest commercial grade stand mix you can get and uh, was, it was supposed to be able to make like I don't know six or seven loaves of bread and the thing failed and actually I, I owned it for I don't know um, this was like 700 watts this thing and I had it uh, 14 months so two months after the warranty and it broke down and it cost me a third of the price to actually get it fixed and I had all the attachments I had the ice cream maker I had the pasta maker I had the um, sausage maker I had all that stuff and the thing broke down and I was so annoyed and so angry that it was going to cost me like $300 or $250 to get this thing fixed that I actually went out and bought this Bosch and no comparison at all no comparison and friends had told me that saying you got to get a Bosch Luke and uh, I, I'm not being paid by Bosch to say this but there is no comparison as to what it can do compared to the other stand mixer that you see on the, that raises up and down and and I was so extremely disappointed after spending all that money and I just basically gave it to a friend to give him to his wife it was fixed and uh, she was extremely happy with it, but I was making like a lot of bread. It had claimed it was supposed to be able to handle that. It couldn't. I wasn't overdoing what it didn't say it could claim. It was like 700 watts or something ridiculous, and it still shut down and still broke because the parts were made of plastic on the inside. So this mixer is the way to go if you're gonna make bread. And I can make six loaves of bread with no problem. And actually, it's so good, you can over knead the bread. And when I give bread away, people, you know, I'll, I'll make 12 loaves of bread in the morning. And people are going, wow, how do you do? I'm going, well, I, I have the tool, right? I have the tools to do it and I have the know-how because I've been making bread for like, you know, close to 30 years. So we're going to come back and I'm going to show you all the ingredients I put in. And for the Middle East flatbread or the za'atar bread. Okay, so we're going to start actually adding the ingredients to make the bread. And I'm just going to show you that now. And what I'm going to start with is put in, I'm doubling recipe, so it calls for approximately uh, 10 cups of flour. So I'm going to put in five cups. And um, I actually am not really great for measuring. That's uh, three, four, five. And now I'm going to add the yeast. And I'm going to put the mixer bowl, the lid on it, and I'm going to actually start mixing it. And I'm going to add some more flour. So we're at, it's, it's what, seven. And so now I'm going to add the water, sugar, salt. An oil that's already been pre-mixed and here this is what it looks like you focus on that take this off and pour that all in at once and you always want to put the splash cover on because of it gets a bit sloppy once you first start it as you'll see so mix that in there and then we go like this creates a lot of dust and or a lot of flour dust and that so Take this off now that it's been mixing. And that's coming along quite nicely. Get the all the excess flour that's in there and let it mix. So I'm gonna wipe the side of the bowl because it's uh, kind of sticking and I'm gonna add some more flour now. Let's scrape the side of the bowl, I guess. One of the things I like about this mixer is it actually has gears in it. It has a transmission and you can hear it gear up and gear down. And uh, so it's when it's got a lot of bread in it or like a lot of dough, you'll actually hear it gear down. And I don't know if you can hear it now, if I get a bit closer. 
And the other one, the stand mixer, the one that had comes up and down, or the ones that, uh, that pops up and down with the thing, yeah, I didn't have that. And generally what would happen is it would just go get overheat and then fail. So this, this uh, mixer is really the only way to go if you want to make large quantities of bread. Because like I said, I can do six at a time and uh, just pop them out and they're uh, and a lot of different kinds of bread, obviously. So our timer is just about ready to go off in two, one, and then we can turn this off. And uh, this is what the uh, bread looks like, and it's um, fairly sticky. And that's the one thing you need to know about using a Bosch mixer is actually, uh, if you're used to making bread by hand and kneading and whatnot, it's it's you. I was always taught that you take it away and it's less you. you it's tactile. It's tacky when you touch it, but the bread doesn't come off. And that's not with the Bosch mixer. It's actually a lot more. Uh, sticky and you have to use oil on your hands when you actually uh, take it out and shape it and whatnot. But I'm going to let this rise for uh, a bit for I, I think it's probably half an hour or an hour somewhere in there uh, minimum 45 minutes I would think and what I'm going to do is I actually have to go get propane because I'm uh, I haven't had time for the pain recently and I have to go get some now so I'm just gonna go run to the uh, gas station and get some propane and then come back and then we'll see how much this has risen until then so we will talk to you okay here I am back it's uh, almost an hour later I what I thought was gonna be uh, maybe a 20 minute trip turned into much longer time because of course where I went for propane, they weren't working, so I had to go somewhere else, and you know, so anyway. So as you can see, uh, the, the dough has risen and is actually really quite, uh, as I take this off, quite high. And oh, it's really sticking, and we're gonna have to take that off. And basically what I'm going to do is just scrape it, put it back in here. Actually, what, no, I don't have to do that. What I'm going to do is put the lid back on put this on and just start kneading it again. And that'll take out, that'll take out all the air and uh, make it ready. <clears throat> but apparently I do need to scrape off some of the extra dough. And I'll stop it and just scrape it here and here and here. And start running again. Okay, and that's taken out all the air out of the dough, and uh, now I'm ready to uh, roll it out, cut it, and the barbecue started. I've got to burn off what I cooked the last time, which was what was that? I can't remember what I cooked last time. I think it was uh, maybe the ribs I uh, I made before. Anyway, um, as you can see, how much it actually rised, and it has a lot of air, and so. We just take, uh, take it down and I'm ready to uh, roll it out.